teaching or something. Lift me up above the shadows. Lift me up above the clouds, Lord, where the pure sunshine is found. Lift me up above my weakness. Lift me up into thy strength. Lift me up above the shadow till I stand with the adling. Lift me Sunday, you guys sound better and better. Of course, you got the 
all the talented people up front row here, you know that, right? Thank you. You sound good. Welcome to Sun City Christian Center. Here comes another talented guy right here, Brother Ronnie. And we're glad. Thank you. You stand back there, you can't hear anything that's being said. So you don't know if it's good or bad. He said, he told me he loved me. <coughs> and, I, and that's a very good thing. That's a very, very good thing. Do we have any visitors here with us this morning? First time you've ever attended one of our church services? If you do, we have a little information packet. It tells you a little bit about our church. Uh, all we ask for you to do is to hold up your hand. First time you've ever attended one of our church services. No visitors today. Well, all of you. Okay, we got, we got a late arrival. Okay. Let's make him feel welcome this morning. <laughs> And then i uh, got several announcements, so let me go ahead and get to them. Uh, men's fellowship for this Saturday. Uh, Brother Kip Harsman has told me or gave me this little letter to read about the men's fellowship. It says, there will be an abbreviated men's fellowship breakfast in the modular next Saturday, which is this coming Saturday, October the 2nd. We'll have coffee, donuts, and fruit for breakfast. And he says, no, it will start at 7.30 and end at 8.15 a.m. to avoid any conflict with the memorial service starting at 10 a.m. Remember, starting time is 7 a.m. for the men's fellowship. Okay, so remember that. And then also uh, on the note of the memorial service, we will be having a memorial service here at 10 a.m. Uh, this coming Saturday for Brother Steve's sister that passed away, Judy Bass Vasquez. Am I correct in that, Steve? Yes. Uh, visitation, or I'm sorry, yes. For the men's fellowship, 7.30. 7.30 to 8.15. And the memorial service at 10. And... We, I have been asked to announce anyone, any of the ladies or any of the men, as far as that goes, that can prepare some type of dish to bring for the memorial service. There's a sign-up sheet in the back. Sister Teresa Talley is holding it up. Anybody that doesn't know Teresa, but you can go there. Sign up, put your name on there, what type of uh, dish you would like to bring. And if you need more information about it, see Teresa, okay? And... Uh, Going on with the announcements, October calendars for children's ministry, the teen ministry, and church cleaning schedule is on the back table for all those that participate in that. And I don't know if you noticed this morning, we've been talking about it for quite some time, but I don't know if you noticed it when you came in this morning, but we finally got our sign. So here's your sign. <laughs> and to all that gave money, gave time and effort to make it possible. We do thank you and we appreciate you. And I want to say this. I know he doesn't want me to, but I'm going to say it anyway. I want to thank Brother Neil Williams for all that he done for the sign. I mean, he, he kind of ordered it, talked to the people about the brightness of the light and all that, which if we'd have done it, all, if I'd have done it, ain't no telling what you'd have had out there. <laughs> But Neil ran the electric for the sign and all that. Spent a lot of time out there. And I just want to say thank you, Neil, for all that you've done for the sign. And then we've got one more announcement. We're still taking donations for the Healing Our Heroes uh, project, I guess you could call it. Trying to get money gathered up through the church to send a considerable donation up to help with the uh, Disabled Veterans Samaritan through Samaritan's Purse. And many of you have asked, well, can I can do that on a monthly basis? You can do it any time you want to. If you want to write out a check, you can make it out to the church. Just put on the memo pad at the bottom what it's for, Healing Our Heroes or Samaritan's Purse, and it will go definitely toward that program. 
and you can give any time that you want to, okay? And uh, I think that's all the announcements that I've got. Amen? God is good. How many of you believe Jesus is coming back? You. you can be seated. Give your attention, if you will, to Brother Rick. Good morning. Hey. Man, I'm excited to be here. I think it's awesome. Um, I think it's awesome that this group or this many people want to get together and talk about God and, and study His Word and stuff. You know, uh, it's been a lot of years. I'm going to eventually get bold enough to ask Pastor Erwin if I can have a Wednesday night um, and tell my full testimony, but I've spent years as a worldly Christian, and uh, just the right people, Brother Donald and a few other people have come into my life and, and really started making an impression on me and how important our witness is, uh, and it should walk through the door before we do, and uh, I, was, I was thinking, I was listening to uh, The Joy, I think it was, on the way to work. And the uh, preacher was speaking about, as believers, once we accept Jesus into our life, we become believers, and we're grafted into the vine. And I was reading in the book of John, and uh, it tells us if, 
I'm the vine, you're the branches. If you're in me and I'm in you, you're going to bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. That means time in him, spending time with him in prayer, spending time in study to show yourself approved, learning the word so that it's in you when it's time, spending time in fellowship like this as, as a like-minded body. I tell you, if you're not doing it, the blessings you receive when you do start doing it is amazing. This song makes me think of that because so many songs like it have talked about receiving a word. you got to be in him and have him in you to receive that word. So I hope it blesses you. I enjoy singing it for sure. Finding myself at a loss for words and the funny thing it's okay the last thing I need is to be With my turn. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Amen. This is a day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad amen, in it. Amen. I know there are heavy hearts here today, but we can rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. We're going to do a little song. We haven't done it in quite some time. It's kind of part of my message today, speaking about being born again. You ever heard that term? Born again. Listen to the words of this song. Let me tell you all about the comforter that the Bible says will lead you on. Jesus said that you have When the Spirit comes down from the throne And now I feel With that promise Oh, that has brought New life to 
church Let me tell you You must have that Fire and Holy Ghost With that prayer We turn it To keep that fire Burn in that kind Of experience That you can be It makes you move Makes you shout Makes you cry Cause it's real, well I've got my hand in the master's hand And my soul been anchored in Jesus' name I'm free from sin and I know that I've been born With so many old toils and dangers, He has already brought me through. Jesus opened blinded eyes, and He made the lame to walk. There ain't nothing too hard for God to do. And now the time. You must seek Him, oh, let Him fill your soul with Him. Well, He'll make you whole as His presence fills your soul. And you'll be, you'll be born again. Come on now. Let me tell you, you must have that. With that prayer, we turn it to keep that fire burning. Is that kind of experience that you can feel? It makes you move, makes you shout, makes you cry. Cause it's real. Well, I've got my hand oh, in the master's hand and my soul. We'll fire and holy ghost with that prayer we'll turn it to keep that fire burning that kind of experience that you can feel well it makes you move makes you shout makes you cry but it's real well I've got my hand and my soul's been anchored in Jesus' name. I'm free from sin, and I know that I've been born again. I'm free from sin, and I know that I've been born again. Of God reminds me of brother brother Ron Russell, and I'd make you want to charge hell with a water pistol. Woo. Amen. <laughs> Praise wet. God! If that don't fire you up, your wood's wet. Amen. You need to call on Elijah. You can be seated for thirty seconds. <laughs> Come on up. Good morning, everybody. Who knows that God is good? Amen. All the time. All right. If you want to, if you feel like standing back up, we're going to continue to praise and worship the Lord.
Yes, Heavenly Father, we do praise you. We bless your name, and we know that every, every single good thing comes from you, and we thank you for every single one of our blessings, from the teeny tiny ones just every day, just waking up and taking a breath and getting out of bed every day to the big answered prayers that we know that you answer. Father, we thank you. Pray that you would continue to move in this place today, that you would anoint Pastor Arlen's words, and that you would anoint our ears to hear the message that you have for us today. We love you. We thank you. We praise you. All in Jesus' name. Amen. They tell me you get forgetful in your older age. Last week, I inadvertently wore the microphone home. <laughs> Remembered that I put it in my truck. And Monday morning, or Monday afternoon, we were in Zephyr Hills. About 2.30, and it dawned on me. I have the microphone. And Brother Roger starts at 4 o'clock. And there's a lot of traffic between Zephyr Hills and Waimama, amen. But I did not break the speed limit, Sister Luzan, amen. We got here on time, about quarter till, so Brother Roger, I'm glad you could get to my, I promise I'll try not to do that again, amen, amen. John chapter 3, and you might be thinking, all right, John 3, 16. Well, let's look at some other things. There's more in John chapter 3 than just John 3, 16, amen, amen. John chapter 3, let's begin in verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that does not accept come that thou doest except God be with him. The King James can get tongue twisting sometimes. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, You must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? And I would like to use for a title today this question, Knowest not these things? This was a man who should have known some things, but yet he did not know that he needed to be born again. Do you know that today, that you must be born again? Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your word once again. For without your word, we would not know these things. We would be like Nicodemus in so many of his days that were completely blind and ignorant of these facts. Though they were leaders in Israel, they were very religious men, but yet they did not know their need for the Holy Spirit to do a regeneration in their life. And Father, I know that there are many today in this world that do not have that knowledge, and we don't want to keep it to ourselves. We want to share it with the world. So I pray, Father, if there's anyone here this morning that doesn't have this knowledge, that by the time this message is over, they will know it and receive it and be born by your Spirit and be born again into your kingdom. We'll thank you for it. We'll praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Born again. Once again, just like last week, it's misunderstood by 
So many. Remember last week we talked about, I got saved. People said, what do you mean you got saved? So we covered that last week. We won't go there again. But the same is true about being born again. You can go out on the street and go up to someone and say, hey, are you born again? And if they don't know anything about the Lord, they think, are you crazy? I have a birthday. I was born. I even have a birth certificate. But am I born again? What a foolish question to ask somebody. Doesn't that seem kind of odd to ask someone if you've been born again? But yet we find out from this text it's very, very important. So because of that, there's a lot of mocking today, a lot of, lot of name-calling at Christians that claim to be born again. I know back in the 70s and 80s, it was made fun of a lot. All these people claim to be born-again Christians. A bunch of crazy nuts is what they are. Born again. How can a man be born again? Same thing Nicodemus asked many, many years ago. <laughs> Who came up with such a term? Where did it come from? This born again. You ever thought about that? Where was it originated from? Was it some crazy right wing nut job? Some crazy conservative? Or maybe some religious zealot? Who coined it first? This phrase about being born again. Well, let's let the Bible answer that question. Okay, you've already seen it. But once again, look at John chapter 3. And we find it two times in our text this morning. First time in verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, this is where it originated from. This is who told us the need to be born again. Verily, verily, once again, truly, truly, that's what that means. I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And in verse 7, marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. It's not optional, according to Jesus Christ. He's the one that coined this phrase, you must be born again. Very, very important. Now, this man, Nicodemus, his name means victory of the people. But yet here he was, a Pharisee, a leader, and he really didn't have the victory. But thank God he was seeking for the victory. He was seeking after Jesus Christ. There's three things we can learn from these first two verses in the Gospel of John. The number one, he was a Pharisee. You might say, well, what is a Pharisee? He is someone who believed in the letter of the law and meticulously tried to keep the letter of the law and tried to lay guilt upon you if you didn't live the letter of the law of the law. He was not only a Pharisee, the Bible said he was a ruler of the Jews, which means he was part of the Sanhedrin, this particular ruling body. It was like a, a lower court. They couldn't, they couldn't condemn someone to death and, and carry out the sentence. They could call him guilty. That's why they had to go to Pilate. They weren't allowed to condemn Jesus to death. Pilate, the Roman government, was kind of like the Supreme Court. These lower courts have to take it to the Supreme Court. And that's why they had to go to Pilate before they could have Christ condemned. He was part of the Sanhedrin. He was a Pharisee. He was part of this Sanhedrin that condemned Jesus Christ tonight. And he might have been a little bit of a coward that he came to Jesus at night. Now, the Bible doesn't say he was a coward. But he did come to Jesus at night when probably nobody would see him. None of his friends, the Pharisees, because they didn't like Jesus. The Pharisees, the, the Sanhedrin, the, the scribes, the, the, the priests, they didn't like Jesus Christ. And so he sought Jesus Christ at night because he wanted to know a little bit. Something was, was pricking him. There was something he wanted to know more about this Jesus, but he didn't dare do it out in public. So he had this encounter with Jesus Christ. Do you know we all need to have an encounter with Jesus Christ? Thank God Nicodemus at least had an encounter with Jesus Christ. And he went and he asked Jesus some questions. But look at John chapter 7. Because we'll see that old Nicodemus begins to progress in this walk with God. And this person by the name of Jesus Christ. John chapter 4. Excuse me, 7. Verse 43. Said so there was a, a division among the people 
because of him. Now, the context basically was this. The rulers had sent for Jesus to be arrested, these Pharisees. They wanted him to be arrested and brought to them. When they went out to arrest him, these officers went out to arrest him, and, and they couldn't do it. They thought, man, I, I, this guy is something else. And they didn't do it. And there was a vision about the people because some believed that he was the Messiah, and others believed he was a fraud. So this is the vision that he's talking about in verse 43. And some of them would have taken him, but no man laid hold on him, talking about Jesus Christ. And then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees, and they said to him, Why have you not brought him? We sent you to go arrest him and to bring us to him. How dare you come back without him? What are you doing? That's your job. You're officers. You're supposed to obey us. We sent you to bring this man to us. And notice what it says in verse 46. The officers answered, Never man spake like this man. Dudes, y'all just don't know this man. Never a man spoke like this man, and they didn't dare lay a hand on him. Then answered them the Pharisees, are you also deceived? He sucked y'all into this crazy stuff too? Are you deceived? <laughs> Verse 49, but this people who knoweth not the law are cursed. You're not like us, Pharisees. We strive to keep the letter of the law. If you're not like us, you are cursed. That's the attitude they had toward people. But then verse 50, Nicodemus. Oh, here's Nicodemus again. Remember we met Jesus, Nicodemus at nighttime, talking to Jesus privately for fear maybe of the elders and the Jewish people, the leaders. But here in verse 50, it says, Nicodemus saying to them, he that came to Jesus by night. So it's the same one. Make no doubt about it. Being one of them, he is one of them. If you're not one of us, you're cursed. He said, I'm one of them. I'm a Pharisee. Doth our law judge any man before it hear him and know what he doeth? Nicodemus stands up for Jesus. You see the difference? He had this personal encounter with him, a one-on-one -on -one with Jesus. And now he knows something about this Jesus. And now he finds himself with these same people that he might have been afraid of before. And he actually stands up for Jesus. They answered and said unto him, Art thou also of Galilee? Search! And look, for out of Galilee arises no prophet. Come on, Nicodemus. Did you come from Galilee too? And they were saying that like you came from Paris or somewhere. That's what people used to think of us. You bunch of hicks from the sticks. They called us that at high school. When we first went to Palmetto High School, we were the hicks from the sticks. And we were. <laughs> Amen. But that's what they're kind of saying. From Galilee? Come on, Nicodemus. You know no prophets come from Galilee, but we know he didn't come from Galilee, did he? No, that's where he went for his Galilee and ministry that we've been learning about in the book of Matthew. But he didn't come from Galilee. He was born in Bethlehem. Amen. So he fit perfectly to be the Messiah. Verse 53, and every man went unto his own house. But did you see how Nicodemus took a stand for the Lord? Church, there's times that we must take a stand for the Lord. Now, we're going to run into Nicodemus again later on. We won't go there right now. But we're going to see Nicodemus one more time before the gospel of John is through. But we find out that this message that Jesus told him about being born again was a powerful message, and no doubt Nicodemus was taking it to heart. He knew there was something about this man named Jesus. So let's look back in our text in chapter 3. Look at verse 4. Nicodemus saith to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb? And that's a good question, really. When Jesus said, you must be born again. Well, what's the natural thing you're going to think? I was born once. How was I born? From my mother's womb. So you must be born again. I, that means i got to climb back in there. <laughs> I bet mama wouldn't like that. <laughs> no, you ain't either. <laughs> but what else could this man think? You must be born again. He was confused. And that's when Jesus answered 
And they gave him the answer, verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto thee, except the man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. It's so important that we be born of the Spirit. And the reason it's so important, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We must remember these things. It's very, very important. The reason, you have, the reason you have to be born again, the reason you have to be born of the Spirit is for this reason right here. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. But the natural man, the man that's born of water, you were born of water, and that was flesh. It's when you were born of your mother. Her water broke, and you were born. You were born of the flesh. And now you have to have a spiritual birth. Verse 3, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Did you notice that? The natural man cannot receive it, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. The only way you can know it is by the Spirit. Jesus said, that's why you must be born of the Spirit so you can be under, begin to understand the things of the Spirit. You're entering to a spiritual world. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You must be born again. You must be born of the spirit of Almighty God. There are several other scriptures we'll look at real quick. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Second Corinthians 3, verses 5 and 6. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as ourselves, but our sufficiency is as God. You think you're sufficient in yourself? You think you can trust in yourself? You think your flesh or your natural man can get it done? No way. That's what he's saying. You think you're sufficient? Think again. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, who has also made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter. That's where, that's where Nicodemus was. He was a Pharisee. He was a man of the letter of the law. Paul said, no, it's not about that, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. I want life. Do you? I want life. And Jesus said, I've come to give you life, that you might have abundant life. That's the kind of life I want. Peter said, we're living stones. We're, we're lively stones. Built up into a, a holy house. Life. You ever been to a dead church? And I'm not casting stones. But I heard of a church one time that said that Someone had a heart attack in the middle of the church. They called for the ambulance to come. They took out four deacons before they finally got to the right guy. <laughs> now, that's a dead church. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> he must be born again. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, not just a page or two over. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, you know this one well. This is why it's so important. And this is how Paul basically says the same thing that Jesus is saying. Because some people say, well, nowhere else does it say I must be born again. That was just some Jesus stuff. <laughs> Let me tell you, that's enough. Amen? That's enough right there. But some people will try to make the argument, that's just a one-time deal. Let's just kind of forget about that. Here's how Paul says the same thing. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Therefore, if any man be in who? Christ. He is what? A new creature. Oh, a new creature. How did he become a new creature? By being born again. The same way you were a creature star. You were born once, but now you're born again. Now you're a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God. You see, now it's all of God, this new birth. Who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry 
of reconciliation. You have been reconciled back to God. You know, there's nothing more beautiful than to see a, a, a marriage that has been rec- be reconciled. It just seems like it's past, it's past fixing. No one can fix it but God. No one can fix us. We've we, we gone too far. All we like sheep had gone astray. We have turned everyone to our own way. But the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. We were filled with iniquity. It was hopeless. But God reconciled us to him, not him to us. God. Wow, this stuff's powerful, church. We've got to get a hold of it. Amen. Being born again, it makes you a new creation. That's why those who try to use the argument, I was born this way. I can't help it. I was born this way. Just who I am. So therefore, God can't hold it against me because I'm just born this way. Jesus said, you need to be born again. And that's the reason. You need to be born again because you was born that way. And that way won't cut it. So that's no excuse. But yet so many are using it today. I don't know if you've heard it, but I've heard it many times. I was born like that. It's not my fault. Back off, preacher. What an open door. Hey, that's right. You were born that way. You were conceived in equity, born in sin. Yes, sir, you're right about that. You need Jesus more than ever. You need to be born again. Amen. Washed in the blood. Forgiven. Reconciled to God. Man. All the more reason, because if you don't, you won't make it into the kingdom of heaven. You must be born again. You see, that's why Jesus and John cried, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. They didn't say rejoice, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. No, because they knew people weren't right with God. You've got to turn back to God. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's very near you. And you'd have thought Jesus said, you've been waiting on the Messiah. Well, here I am. Rejoice. He said, no, you need to repent first. Because you were born in sin. And you can't stand before a holy God unless you're born. And he told a religious man this. And Nicodemus was a religious man. And he was a ruler of the Jews. He was somebody. But he said, you must be born again. Nicodemus, or you, yourself, won't see the kingdom of God, and you don't even know it. No, it's not now. This. Wow, what an indictment. A man who was totally trusting in the law. The law won't get you. Amen. It never has been able to. Look at Romans chapter 12, verse 2 with me. (coughs) Excuse me. This singing and preaching gets to you after a while. (laughs) Amen. Romans chapter 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the what? The renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You see, part of being born again is renewing of your mind. you got a brand new way of thinking, or at least you should be. The Bible says you put on the mind of Christ. You start thinking like Jesus thinks. Remember the old wristband, WWJD, what would Jesus do? That's really a good thing to keep in mind. When you find yourself in a situation, ask yourself, what would Jesus do right now? I'm going to try to think like Jesus. but I'm going to put on the mind of Christ. This guy just really hurt me. This person just really was really wrong. What did, Jesus, what would you do? Because I want to pop him. Just, just give me the word, Jesus. Come on. He'd say, turn the other cheek. What? Turn the other cheek? Wow, that's what Jesus thinks? That's how Jesus thinks? In certain circumstances, it is. We shouldn't be ready to retaliate all the time. We should have a spirit and a heart to work things out. It doesn't mean we can't defend ourselves. I tell you, you start beating on me, I'm going to fight back. Now, I'm going to tell you right now. And if you can beat over 30 seconds, you got me. <laughs> Better be the worst 30 seconds of your life. Okay. <laughs> now, you know I'm just teasing. 
My wife could take me in a heartbeat. <laughs> you wonder, how do you know that? Believe me, I know. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Some of you are just too scared to admit it. The Holy Spirit is so important. That birth by the Spirit of God. John chapter 14. You know this one very well. John chapter 4, excuse me, John chapter 14, verse 26. But the Comforter, I'm scared of the Holy Spirit. He's a Comforter. He's a Comforter. I'm scared. I'm scared. I don't have nothing to do with that Holy Spirit stuff. Y'all start talking about the Holy Spirit. I, I get all a little nervous. He's your Comforter. My wife just bought a brand new Comforter for our bed. She was tucking me in last night. <laughs> she does that. <laughs> a little embarrassing, but, but she does. No matter how I'm situated, she's got to come, start tucking me in. She said, isn't that so soft and comfortable? And I had to tell her, I don't pay no attention to this stuff. <laughs> but since you mentioned it, it is awful soft. It's a brand new comforter. Well, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. You see, there are some spirits out there you need to be very nervous about because they're not sent in His name. They're doctrines of devils. Out in the church, He comes as an angel of light, very deceptive. A wolf in sheep's clothing. We need the Holy Spirit to discern between right and wrong. And that's what he tells us here. Not only is he a comforter, but notice what else he is. He shall teach you all things. Wow, I need a teacher. Amen. And there's times in this life where we don't, we don't understand this as much in the West because we have teachers and preachers and Bibles and books. But man, in some of these countries where it's against the law to even have a Bible, these people understand exactly what the Holy Spirit, how the Holy Spirit speaks to them in, the, in certain times when their lives are on the line. He teaches them and brings all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Brother Rick, that's why it's important to put this word in. Devour the word because there'll be sometimes you'll be somewhere you don't have your Bible hand. Oh, let me get my Bible and turn to the Holy Spirit can bring it back to your members. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good, church. The first key to Nicodemus, I believe, was his personal encounter with Jesus Christ. That's key. You need that. Everyone needs to have a little talk with Jesus. You need to get by yourself somewhere, sometime in your life, and just get on your knees and have a talk with Jesus. Ask him all kinds of questions. Jesus, how can this be? That's all Nicodemus did. I'm confused. I don't understand. Tell God that. There's plenty of things I still don't understand. God doesn't care. Get along with him. Get in your prayer closet. And just have a little talk with Jesus. That's what Nicodemus did. He had a little talk with Jesus. I guarantee you, it will change you. It changed Nicodemus. Just that little talk that he had that night. He was now willing to stand up for Jesus. You ever wanted to stand up for the Lord? Amen. That, that means you've been born again. There's something in you. There's a spirit in you that gets offended when someone runs Jesus down. Whoa, that's my, that's my Lord. That's my Savior. No. You can't help it. Someone mocks him. You take it personal, don't you? I was working years ago. Yeah, I've been a preacher a while now, so I haven't worked in a long time. That's why. <laughs> That's what some people will tell you. But I used to be a heavy equipment operator. Heavy equipment, I mean, I, I, truck drivers and backhoes and track loaders and everything. Drag lines. Rough guys. I mean, you know, the rough guys of this world. Rubbed elbows with them for years and years and loved them. They put me in the office one time because I was having a physical problem. They stuck me in this office. That's, that's a horrible thing for a parish boy to be stuck in the office, like putting John the Baptist in prison. You used to be outside. But here I was stuck in this, this 
office weighing, weighing trucks. As they'd pull across the scale, I'd weigh them and write out a ticket. You know, it was boring. Oh, my goodness. But one of the, the ladies that worked there, she'd put a thing on the window so the truck drivers could see it when they'd come up to sign their, their ticket. And it was the truck driver's 23rd Psalm. And I can't remember how, how all it went, but it was something that my truck runneth over. And I read that, and it grieved me. It, it just grieved me to see the 23rd Psalm just written like that. It, it was just, I thought, but this, I, I don't own this place. I can't tell them what to put up and what not to put up. You know, I'm, I don't want to appear self-righteous, but I, I couldn't let go of it. I, said, I just can't. Every day, I've got, I've got to read it backwards. It's on the window, but I still know what it said. I went out there, oh, my gosh, the 23rd Psalm for the truck driver. Lord, what do I do? I really feel like the Holy Spirit told me, take Luke 23, 34, write it down, and stick it just underneath that. That's all you do. Don't put your name on it. You just put it anonymously right underneath there. And it simply said this, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. The next day it was gone. It was gone. They took it down. A few months later I was talking to the lady that worked there. She said, Arlen, I put that up there. Boy, God really smoked my heart. She said, and I got saved in church the other night. Amen? You just never know, church. You never know. We can't come across self-righteous. I understand it. And I just say, Holy Spirit, how do we handle this situation? The same way Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They have no idea what they're doing. I told you we would run into Nicodemus one more time, didn't I? Remember? Old Nicodemus. He met with Jesus. It, it touched his heart. Because now he's standing up for Jesus. We're seeing a, a progress in this man's life. So look at chapter 19 of the Gospel of John, and we'll see old Nicodemus one more time. Look at verse 38. And after this, Jesus has died on the cross. This is where what's happening. Jesus has given his life for our sins. And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly... For fear of the Jews, there was retaliation in those days. Besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. He came, therefore, and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which was at the first came to Jesus by night. Same Nicodemus, remember? Here Nicodemus is. There was Jesus after he died. In his death, Nicodemus is there. Tell me the message of Jesus didn't touch this man. And he brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. They say an average about 20 pounds to bury someone. He brought a hundred. They guess Jesus might have weighed 175 pounds. So Joseph of Arimathea carrying 175, Nicodemus carrying a 100-pound bag of myrrh and all these spices. No amount, no telling how much it costs. But they brought all they could, brought extra. See the heart, he could, anything he could do for the Lord. In verse 41, now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a new sepulcher, wherein there was never laid, yet man laid. They laid they, excuse me, there laid they Jesus, therefore, because of the Jews' preparation day. For the sepulcher was nigh at hand. And it said they, Joseph Nicodemus. He had part in the burial of Jesus. Does the death of Jesus touch you today? Church, it should. Every time we have communion, it should touch our heart that Jesus died for our sin. He said, do this in remembrance of me. Never forget the price that Jesus paid on the cross. Nicodemus was touched even in Christ's death. But thank God the story doesn't end, does it? 
Thank God the story. And we're closing, so don't get too nervous on me. <laughs> you see, to make it to the kingdom of God, you've got to have a spiritual experience with Christ. You need to swallow your old pride. Because I know what it's like. See, I got this. That's what we do is, is in the world, in the natural realm. I got this. I can handle this. I don't need anybody's help. I can do this. You ever done that? When someone gave you a task and someone else comes along and says, here, let me help you. No, I don't need your help. I don't need your help, man. I got this. Then you get into it and you realize you make a mess. You've made a mess. You put your hands to it. Now you can't finish it. Now you have to swallow your pride and go back to the person you've offended and say, would you forgive me? I need some help. And that's all we're doing to God. That's all we're really doing, church. I got this, Lord. I can take this. I don't need no God. I don't need no Jesus. I don't need any crutches. I can handle life. Do you remember when you came to the place where you said, Lord, I can't handle it anymore. I need some help. I remember that vividly. I'm a mess. Well, I made a mess out of my life. Can you come and straighten it out? I need something. And you know what I needed? I needed to be born again so I could have my mind changed and quit thinking like the world and start thinking like Jesus Christ. And he came in and cleaned up my mess. Thank God he cleaned up my mess. Gave me a brand new start. Old things passed away. Behold, all things have become new. A brand new slate. My sins is cast as far as the east is from the west. Never to be remembered ever again. He'll never throw it in my face, church. That's the kind of God we serve. Amen. Hallelujah. And in closing, Matthew 16, 25. This is what it boils down to. I know you all hear me breathing. <laughs> At least I'm breathing. <laughs> it may be a little labored, but I am breathing. <laughs> Let's begin in verse 24. I, I wrote 25, guys, but if you can, go back to 24. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. And that's what being born again is all about. You surrender that old life. Say, God, give me a brand new life in Christ. And he wants to do that, church. Would you bow your heads for a moment? Amen. Do you know these things? Or are you like Nicodemus? I didn't know that, Pastor Arlen. I didn't know I had a need to be born again. I didn't know I needed to come to a place where I asked God to forgive me, that I was just like a sheep that had gone astray. And, and God took all my sins and placed them upon his back, and died for me. But I realize it now. I need to be born again. How do I do it? The same last week, to get saved. Ask God to forgive you of your sins. Come into your life. Make a brand new creature out of you. Doesn't mean you won't have any struggles. Doesn't mean you won't have any problems ever again. But it does mean you'll have a Savior. You'll have a Holy Spirit that will be with you through everything you go through. Amen. So let's bow our heads for a moment. Once again, if you're here and you would like to receive Christ as your Savior, these altars will be open. Just walk down and I would be glad to pray with you. Those of you at your seats, you've already been born again, pray. Ask the Lord to touch hearts of those that maybe don't know this. Sometimes we take it for granted, but these last days, there's a lot of things even the church world doesn't understand. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we brought forth your word today. This came from your heart, Jesus, to man, this born-again experience. It's something you wanted to set Nicodemus free from was the letter of the law because you knew it would kill him, that you had come to give him life. And I thank you for the progression we've seen in Nicodemus' life as he got closer 
and closer to you, even in your life and even in your death. So, Father, I pray for there's anyone here today that hasn't been born again, and they know and they realize that they need to be born again, that they would be bold enough to come down front and receive you as their Savior and be in the same standing as Nicodemus. It does nothing to be ashamed of. This was a, a religious man, a wealthy man, a very popular man, but he needed you. So, Father, we just pray your Holy Spirit would deal in these few moments. Hallelujah, Father. Nothing to be ashamed of. I remember the night I accepted Christ. I was standing, holding the pew, shaking like a leaf, thinking, I wish that preacher would shut up. I just want to get out of here. But yet I know I need Jesus. I know what he said is true. But there was a, there was a war going on. The flesh and the spirit was warring. And I knew me being the bashful person I was, I was never going in front of that church. I knew that in my heart. There was no way that I was going to walk in front of that church. My heart began to sink as I realized that. Once again, my bashfulness may cost me eternity. And a dear saint of God, about four foot tall, Nellie Bratchard, an old Pentecostal lady, I heard a voice say, son, why don't you come? Why don't you come, son? And I followed her to the altar and gave my heart to Jesus. Amen. Well, I pray the Holy Spirit has at least touched your heart today. Food for thought. Sometimes we're just planting seeds, church. Maybe some want to come and water this seed some other time, and, and it'll bring forth the fruit that God so desires it for. Amen. But until that time, let's... Stand up in honor of the Lord, and let's pray a prayer of dismissal. And always the altars are open afterwards. Anyone that needs prayer for their body or situations, you can always come forward. We'd be glad to pray for you. But we're going to dismiss now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you once again for another opportunity to share your gospel message. I know your word does not return void, but it will accomplish what you sent it out to do. So, Father, we have confidence in that. We know it took many times for some of us to finally make that decision. So we leave this in your hand. Only you can save. You're the only one. So as we leave here today, we ask once again for your hand of safety and safekeeping to be upon us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. And I'm taking the microphone off right now.